speaker is going to be Frank, and Frank has been with uh, the Relay for five years. Right? Five years. Five years. Um, and William is also going to um, tell us how long he's been with the Relay. Uh, just a couple months. A couple Brand months. Brand new. He's a newbie. Um, and Kristen is new also. She just started a few weeks ago. She just transferred from Houston. She moved here from Houston, Texas, so welcome. And Jean is going to talk to us about survivorship. So thank you for coming. We appreciate having you here, and I'll let you guys take over. Frank, what? I'm your turn to I, I, oh, yeah, I got the mic. <laughs> if, if I move, will you be able to capture me? Yeah. Perfect. William, I'll let you turn it over. Okay, well, uh, basically the reason that uh, we're here is because Monica is a team captain. She's been coming to a lot of the team captains meeting, and... Uh, you know, she's mentioned that she has a lot of questions and isn't sure really how to get started and that, you know, you guys are all really motivated. So uh, hopefully by the end of today, you guys will have a better direction on, on what you need to do and, you know, how you want your event to go. And, and just, uh, we're here to clarify and answer questions and give you ideas. So ask as many questions as you can. Again, thank you for taking your lunch uh, hour to meet with us. Let me do when you get involved with the American Cancer Society, it's always you tell a story, a little story about yourself, a little bit of story of how the American Cancer Society has impacted your life. For me, I'm a police officer here in Santa Monica, and I've been here 31 years, and we've been involved with Relay for Life since its inception back in 2001. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got involved because we thought it was a great opportunity for the police department to get involved in a community event because, you know, a lot of times law enforcement and cancer patients really don't mix, and, you know, they're not, you know, uh, breaking the law, they're pretty much going from point A to point B, and point A usually is their home to the hospital and back home. And so we don't have a lot of interaction with that. And so that's how we got involved uh, as a police department in general. And uh, on our third year of doing Relay for Life, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And so it really hit home for me because I was there always as being supportive of the American Cancer Society, saying, you know, I, I need to do more for the American Cancer Society. What can I do? And then now I turned around and it's me that the American Cancer Society is doing something for me, which really made an impact on my life because I saw the money raised in Santa Monica, I saw it where it went, and it actually impacted people and how they touched their lives. So uh, as we'll go through the uh, program today, you'll see that I don't think very many, many of us here have not been touched by cancer one way or another. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so that's my story about the American Cancer Society and how it's helped me because now that I'm a cancer survivor, it's changed my whole perspective of what the American Cancer Society does for me. Relay for Life. This is our fifth year here at Santa Monica. It's a great community event. We hold it at Santa Monica College, and it starts at 9 o'clock in the morning, and it ends at 9 o'clock the following day, Sunday. So it's a 24-hour event, and you have a team. Monica's your team captain, and what her role is is to get to try to get somebody on the track to walk around the track for 24 hours. So what you're going to do is, if your team is nine, you'll try to have somebody representing your team from Google, because you want Google to be out there. Uh, so you may be walking one or two hours on the track, and then somebody else will relieve you, and somebody else will relieve you. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll be out there with a lot of the committee members. We'll be walking around the track, drinking coffee, and just chatting. And the nice thing about that is that you bring your friends, your family members to the event, and they share the same emotion and same uh, feelings. And what you'll find is that if you've been touched by cancer, as you're walking through the track, you'll talk to somebody, a complete stranger, and that person will have the same things that are going on in their lives, that they've been touched by cancer. And you get to share ideas and get that bond because it's all about community involvement and education. Um, the American Cancer Society Relay for Life, there's 53 events in Los Angeles County. Uh, they're nationwide, they're international, but for our, for our concern here, Santa Monica is just one relay, and in, in L.A. County, there's a Venice, there's a Beverly Hills, so they're every, almost every community has a relay for life, and what it is, it's that it's about like the Starbucks story, and why you say, well, why don't you just have a big relay? Well, it's Starbucks. If you turn around, every time you go down the street, there's a Starbucks, there's a Starbucks, there's a Starbucks, right? And they're all over the place, but what it is is that Santa Monica is a unique, unique community. And Beverly Hills is a unique community. And what you don't want to do is you want to not shut somebody out because a lot of people don't want to drive that distance. They want to stay within their own community and they want to feel like it's their part because I want to be able to go to this event and say, I can walk with my neighbor or a person down the street. And if they go to some other community, they really don't have that buy-in or that bond. And so that's why Relay can be a big thing, but we like to keep it into our area here because Santa Monica is very unique. 
What we walk is, there is three major components to Relay for Life. At 9 o'clock, there's the opening ceremony, and Gene will talk a little about it because it's about the survivors with the American Cancer Society because we're really celebrating survivorship, celebrating people like me, which I don't feel like I'm a survivor, but I am. And they're celebrating our, our fortune of being able to survive cancer. At 9 o'clock at night, there's another ceremony, which is the luminary ceremony. At that time, this is the moment that we have the opportunity to remember the ones that lost their battle to cancer and the ones that have been victorious and beat the battle with cancer. When I walked out of the hospital that morning, the doctor says, Frank, you're one of the unique people. I said, why is that? He says, you come in cancer with cancer, now you're going home cancer-free. And so that's a real unique feeling to have. Sorry about that. Being a police officer, they always call you, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, and then the, at the third ceremony, which is the important one, is also the closing ceremony, which is at 9 o'clock on uh, Sunday morning. And that's when you wrap up everything and you talk about how much money you raise and you talk about all these things. And of course, just those three ceremonies are the key components, but there's events going on through all the 24 hours. So if you're there at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're going to be watching a movie with us because we show a movie at night at Santa Monica College. If you're there at 5 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning, you're going to be smelling fresh pancakes and eggs that the local Boy Scout troop will make. So you're going to be all over, so it's going to be a great thing. Um, one of the things that if, if I can say one ceremony that if you have to make, it's a lumin luminary ceremony. It's a ceremony that you really need to see how it's done because it really touches you. And just to make you realize how fortunate we are that we can walk around that track because a lot of people won't be able to walk around the track because they just don't have that strength. And we all have that strength here, you know what I mean? We're able to go out there and, and say, okay, we're going to carry the torch for somebody else that can't do that. And that's just a little quick overview of what Relay is about. Yes, the video. Okay, it's video time. We're going to show about a three-minute video. It's just to talk a little bit about what the Relay for Life is about. children, that we the healthy have a responsibility to help heal the sick. The survival act to me is really important just because it's, it's an honor to me, like to, to be out there with like fellow cancer survivors and fellow cancer patients, that to me, that's a real honor. First, the survivor act that I went on was very emotional. I cried most of the way around. I did not expect it to be that emotional, but it was. Uh, I think part of the reason was because people were cheering and clapping for us. It just lifted our spirits immediately. And we ran into a bunch of people we knew, uh, friends of ours, that, that we did not realize were going through the same thing. Here out of an illness that can affect so many is bringing all of us together. And through that, you draw strength from each other. I think that relay is a magnet because people feel like they're able to help each other. And we're all humans and we're in this life together. 
It's 24 hours of your life. You take it out for a moment. You stop everything you're doing. You, you, you stop thinking about the things you think you're going to have fun with. And you start learning something else about fun, about happiness, about being together. That is just incredible. That was just a quick overview of what Relay for Life is about. What we're going to do is have Jean come up and talk a little bit about survivorship and what she does with the Relay for Life here in Santa Monica. one of the local hospitals right down the street on 16th Street. And I wanted to uh, make a point. I was listening to Frank t talking. And before the Relay for Life, the American Cancer Society used to have a Making Strides uh, program where they would have a, a, a relay walk. And um, we were, the hospital was very involved with it. And we had a team. And it was just so exciting. Then they moved it to, uh, what's that park downtown? Uh, anyway, it, further away. And we totally lost the pe our hospital team because they didn't want to go to another, another area. So when Relay for Life started five years ago, it was very exciting for us at Santa Monica Hospital. But it has taken us several years just to, to build back up. And we still don't have the size of team that we, we used to. But I think it's very important that it is, there are all of these locations. And it's in, um, uh, it's right in our backyard. And when you're there, you'll see different mm. people that you know. And, and it's very, very exciting. You'll meet people from different companies. And it, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the first two years that, that I did Relay for Life in Santa Monica, I did the opening ceremonies, which was kind of fun because I got the fire chief and the police chief and, and let me see, who else? Boy Scouts do a salute and, and that whole thing and the, and the mayor and, and different people. And, but it's like a, a small town. Every, everybody turns out. Police chief police is there. But chief home's there. I mean, it really is fun. So I did that for a couple years. And um, then I started uh, doing the survivor chair. And that, to me, is really what it's all about. And it's very exciting. We really need survivors to, to give the rest of us the energy to, to keep this going and to realize what we're working for. And so we have a survivor breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning. It, we have a survivor tent. And we, the, uh, breakfast is being provided by Shutters on the Beach Hotel. It's for 100, we're estimating 100 survivors. And uh, they will have breakfast in the tent and then go to the opening ceremonies. And there they'll have um, uh, listen, to the, listen to all of the speakers. And it, it's kind of fun, it's uplifting. And then the survivors will open up Relay for but doing the first lap. And it's, they have different color t-shirts. And it's, I think for the survivors, it is fabulous because they feel the energy and the support. And there are survivors there that have been 25 years survivors, like my husband, who you know is in good health. And there are people there that have had cancer for maybe a couple months. And they can look at, at that 25 year survivor and think, gee, you know, I can be there. I can work towards that. I can make it. And so it's, it's, it's very, it is emotional, but it's also very uplifting. And then when they cross the um, uh, first lap line, they get a medal to put around their, their neck. And it's, it's, it's just fabulous. So what I, my job is to go around town to all the groups that I'm in and to give these um, flyers to people and say, if you know of any survivors at all, please have them come and be a part of the American Cancer Society Relay for Life. Because um, we, we need the survivors for the encouragement, and, and they need this activity. Did I forget anything, Frank? Nope, she's got it covered. Okay. Thank you, Jean. 
You know, as Gene mentioned about the Food for Survivors, uh, we try to get as much donated to us. And so last year, um, when I got to the event, I saw the food coming in for all the participants, and I saw what the survivors were eating, and I thought, I'm a survivor now. I'm going to eat the food because Gene did a fabulous job, and so I ate the <laughs> top of the line. So I'm, I'm not bashful about saying, hey, I'm a survivor when it suits my needs. But <laughs> uh, some, sometimes you're going to be asked, where does the money go? Uh, and that's a tough question. And one of the, some of the things that we talk about and, and some of the things that are key components to uh, Google's and to all of you yourselves is that um, there's going to be 160,000 new diagnosed patients here in California this year of cancer. One in three will be diagnosed in their lifetime, and one in eight women, for the women here, will be diagnosed with breast cancer. So, I mean, that, when you look at the odds there, if you just look to your right or your left, somebody's going to have cancer or be diagnosed with cancer. I mean, so those numbers are great for 160,000 for this year in California. Um, one of the things that the money is used for is used for f to uh, do a lot of research. Uh, in 1974, they, with the money provided to a doctor, they provided, uh, created a, a tamoxifen, which is used to prevent uh, prevention of breast cancer. So that's popular today, and this is founded back in 1974. The other thing that I'm thankful personally is they funded the research that was for prostate cancer, the PSA exam. Because for me, they caught the, my cancer so early, I never had a symptom. And I asked the doctor, I asked the urologist, I said, when would I have had a symptom that I had something? He said, probably 20 years from today. That's how long it had been in my system before, and by, you know, 20 years later, it would have been throughout my entire body, so they would never, you know, I would not have a, uh, a chance to live. So with that PSA, that, that funding, so when you look at what really the money goes to Santa Monica Relay, it goes to American Cancer Society, it really sends a message to you uh, where the money goes. The American Cancer Society also offers some great programs out there. Look good, feel better. They have man-to-man. -man. They have all these programs that are provided that are all free. All free. They have, what's the program for the uh, uh, corporations? Um, living healthy or there's a program that you can contact the American Cancer Society and what they have is they come in and they can work with your employees on fitness and on dieting and things like that and it's all provided free because it's important that you know that they, they, they have the diets that you eat it's important that their diet is a correlation that cancer can be reduced so those things are there. Um, some of the things that the money is, is that the money is never used for personalized one-to-one -one because the American Cancer Society looks, how are they going to impact the largest amount of people in an area? So they're not looking to, oh, we're going to give money for Frank. They're looking, we're going to give money for prostate research will, will impact 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 people. And so that's where the money goes for research. And some of the things that you want to keep in mind is that the money, when you have your team here at your Google's today, you're looking around and saying, God, we have a small team. But imagine that in two years or three years, your team is going to be tripling, quadrupling. You're going to come out of here with Google representation because when you look at your 168 employees, their families, their relatives, and that, you may have a potential of having a team of 500 or teams up to 500. And so what you want to do is you, once you get to the point that you're about 15 or 16 on your team, you need to start thinking about a second team. So you have Google 1, Google 2, and then all the way down. So those are things that you keep in mind. Because your teams will expand. The day of the event, you're going to have people from Google that are going to show up because they're going to be relatives, families, friends that are going to come out just to support you and just to see what it was. I was talking to Monica earlier. I had the first year we were out there, we had an employee at the police station says, I said, hey, you're going to come out to Relance? She said, I really don't have something else to do. I said, just come on out and see what it's all about. OK, I'm going to stay five minutes and leave. So I saw her that morning. Eight hours later, she's still there. I said, what are you doing? I thought you were going to win. She said, I can't leave. I said, leave. Get out. I can't. And she, the following year, she came back, and she was on our committee. And she's been involved with Relay for Life since. So it's just one of those things that you keep in mind. What we do is we do a luminary ceremony. We have a small crowd today, so one of the things we're going to do, do we have any cancer survivors? And not everybody wants to say they're a cancer survivor, so if you don't feel comfortable, don't say you're a cancer survivor. OK. What we usually do is then at the Relay, we have a luminary ceremony. And what we do here is we'll talk a little bit about it. And it really is what it is, is celebrating those that won their battle and those that lost their battle of cancer. So if you have a friend, a relative, a parent, son or daughter that's been impacted by cancer, stand. 
if you've had a coworker, a neighbor, an acquaintance that you know that has been impacted by cancer, stand. We have one person in this room that's fortunate, that hasn't been touched by cancer. So we look at that and you get out there, I mean, we're really fortunate that we're here. You can have a seat. And so what we're, we're saying is, as you look around, almost every single person here has been impacted by cancer one way or the other. We had one person that didn't stand because they haven't been impacted. And so that sends a strong message that cancer is out there. So. Fundraising ideas. This is my favorite. We have a team at Santa Monica Relay that comes in usually with about twenty-six or $27,000 they raise. One team. And what they do is they do fundraising from the entire year. They do garage sales, yard sales, bingo night, poker night. They do all these things. In fact, there's kind of interesting things for Google. If you work with the, your, your management at Google, you know, they can have that, you know, employees can get, uh, you know, something special in, the, in, the, uh, in your cafeteria. And then that for an extra price of, you know, you pay a dollar or something like that. I mean, some, some corporations have jean day. You can wear your jeans on a Friday and for an extra $5, and all the proceeds go to that. Uh, Monica and I talked a little bit about uh, uh, fundraising at your campsites. Uh, talked about baking cookies and selling them. And uh, you'll be surprised how many people will come by and grab your cookie and drop in $5 in your bucket. And you'll think, $5 for a cookie? And it's not about the cookie because they're not looking to taste. So if you're a bad cook, so what? You know, they'll eat it, you know. They're there to, to provide and to help you f raise money for, Amer you know, American Cancer Society and research and for the Relay for Life. So uh, those are some of the fun fundraising ideas. You know, a lot of fundraising ideas, you know, you can have an egg toss. And if you want to participate in the egg toss, you've got to pay 50 cents. And then you have a prize from Google. Google may donate something and say, okay, hey, at the end of the day, if you want this mug, you have to participate in this egg toss or balloon toss or whatever it may be. And then all participants pay an extra, you know, some fee. And all that money is raised. And you'd be surprised because what we did last year, we put a, a five gallon bottle of sparkling uh, bottle, water, empty one, by our coffee machine. And at the end of the day, we had like 400 and some dollars in there. So people just stopped by and got their coffee and dropped some money in there. And so there are all sorts of fundraising ideas, and as you come through them, just run them by. The only thing that the college does not allow is open fires and fireworks. But anything else, water balloons, you name it, they'll have there. So that's pretty much our... our uh, Can we talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, on the fundraising side, I think that's a, that's a really good opportunity for a company like this to do something that you know, really tells people who you are. Uh, one, of, one of the teams that uh, we just signed up is uh, part of Youth League Football. So their fundraising is going to involve like a tackling dummy and um, something where you kick a football into a net. So they're going to have fun with it and it's going to be about football because that's who they are. They're football players. Um, another team is uh, a bunch of wellness professionals like chiropractors and uh, acupuncturists. So. They're going to have something like a massage table or maybe, a, you know, like a chiropractic type back exam that people are going to contribute for and they'll, you know, just deliver a message about, you know, healthy living while they're getting a free back exam. And, uh, you know, that, again, is part of who they are. So you have an opportunity to be creative. I think that's one of the best things that this event is for teams. I mean, you can do whatever you want. The fundraising idea is completely up in the air. So you can do, I mean, you guys have phenomenal resources here. You can make a really cool booth with all kinds of techie stuff that uh, all the kids there would really, uh, you know, get a kick out of. So, you know, with a place like this, I mean, you guys can go nuts. And, you know, you should. So, so do that. Um, and then the other thing, that's basically one of your responsibilities as a team, is to, you know, have an event there that makes the, the whole relay more fun. And at the same time, when people come to your, your area, they're, they're also giving money, which is going to create the next PSA test or the next tamoxifen. Um, also, though, you want to deliver a message of some kind, because I think that uh, is actually more valuable than the money in some ways. An example of this is they had a game I heard that uh, somebody did called Find the Pollock. And uh, I guess it was this tube that kids can crawl through. They made like this double dare course. And they filled it with balloons. And, uh, and the balloons are polyps. 
So you had to just crawl through the tube and, and pull out this balloon. Hey, look, I, I'm called man. Um, but uh, it's a simple game, but the message is, is pretty clear. It's that, uh, you know, polyps are things that, you know, people have in their home. They're just there, you know, feel it, you can't see it. And uh, if you find them early and you remove it, then it's not a big deal. It happens to people all the time. And uh, if you don't, then they can metastasize and become malignant. And then you have a serious problem because colon cancer is a, is a vicious form of cancer. I mean, that's, that's a particularly uh, nasty one. And uh, that game, just delivering a, a simple message, it's fun. It, it takes a child two minutes, 20 seconds to crawl through a tube and pull out a balloon. But people now know that they have to go get checked regularly. And that game probably saved you know, a couple of people's lives because they'll go, they'll get checked out, they'll have their polyps removed, and that's a, that's a huge accomplishment that the event did. So that's why uh, you know, we want you to focus on delivering some sort of message like that also. And those two things can be the same thing. But um, you know, we have a, a mission delivery person, Glenn, which I'll make sure you talk to him. Uh, he's got all different ideas about uh, you know, the different messages that you can deliver. But uh, if you can incorporate that into what you do when you're there, then, uh, then you'll, you'll do a lot. For a lot of people, then you won't even realize it. So that's, uh, that's very important. You know, as I look out, I see the T-shirt and I see the jacket that says Google. People would love, love to be able to wear one. I know my son would love to have a Google T-shirt just to wear. And he's a freshman in college. But imagine if you had some type of a fundraising activity at your campsite that the prize is a T-shirt. Or, a, you know, the grand prize is a jacket. Oh, people will line up to try to get it. You, you know, you sell raffle tickets to get there, and then at the end of the day, you're going to announce the winner. And people will love to wear that with pride because it's just something that Google is very identifiable in the community. I mean, if you say Google, everybody knows what Google is. And people say, where'd you get that jacket at? Where'd you get that T-shirt? So, I mean, you, you, you have the, po the, the possibility of doing endless things here at Google because you have the, the name already recognition is there. So it doesn't have to be, oh, what is that? Everybody knows Google. Yeah, I don't really want to. Really but we're putting pressure on you. We're putting yeah, pressure on you. You should have the coolest loop there. <laughs> you guys are. Google, man, if you guys get beat by the football team. I mean, as we walk and saw these two things here, imagine having something like that at your campsite. I mean, that would be, people would go, wow. I mean, that catches your eye and your attention quickly, and they're just that simple. It's just something a little unusual and out of the ordinary that you have that potential. I mean, we walk through your office space. And we were watching the screens and seeing the screens. So I mean, the technology is here and the ideas are here. It's just taking them to the college and implementing them. And I think you guys have the potential of being the high team raisers. Now we're going to go to any questions and answers. Any questions out there? Well, we have thought about uh, the fundraiser. What do people normally charge when they? Uh, you mentioned a raffle. I hadn't even thought of that idea. But how do people do that? Do they put, like, have stuff that they want to give away, or do they sell it? You can do either or. You can do a nice blend. I mean, if Google says, hey, we want to give away, here's 5,000 pens or pencils that we want to give away. You can give those away, and then, you know, if they give you something a little nice, you may say, hey, we're going to sell these for 10 cents or 15 cents or 25 cents or a dollar. You set the limit. The only thing is that we ask any team fundraising that occurs that all the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society Relay for Life or towards your team. You know, we don't, we don't allow teams to come in and say, okay, half of it will go to a private entity and then half goes to that. We try to stay away from that. But what you set your limits and whatever prices you think is reasonable. And at the end of the day, let's say it's not moving, then you drop the price by 50%. Or you give it away for free or whatever you want to do. But pretty much, you know, if uh, you go there, I mean, if you wanted to sell me that Google jacket for a dollar, I'll give you a dollar right now. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm easy going. I mean, <laughs> but but you see what I mean. So those things are you. You set the price on those things yourself, and uh, I mean, you may want to lure people that hey, during this hour between 11 and 12, we're going to have giveaways, and then everybody's at Google's tent, and then you can give your stuff out. So well, yeah, we're you're as the creativity is whatever you want it to be. We have a member has been on the committee for the past yes. I know that they, yeah, they, they think they, they've given money, I, I believe. Really? Yeah, if I'm at Okay. Well, I guess they're... 
Yeah. And you don't want to say that MTV is better than Google, do you? Fair competition. Fair competition. I think when you get out there, you're going to take a look at it and then not know or how to, if you've ever been involved with Relay, you're going to, at the end of the day, you're going to go, my gosh, what an opportunity it was because the information that you gain and you gather from that that you'll take to your friends and your own family. I mean, my big preach for me being a, a prostate cancer is if you haven't been tested, if you're over 50, you need to get a PSA. If there's a history of prostate cancer in your family, you need to start that PSA exam early. All it is is a blood test. And I mean, it, you, 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 you'll be surprised that after I do a presentation, guys will come up and say, what symptoms did you have? Or what should I do? Because, you know, it's that gray area, and it's so important to get tested. Same thing with breast cancer, and same thing with, the, you know, colonoscopy. And all those things are important because that's the message you really want to get out there. The more exposure you have for your employees, the more people say, you know, I got that information from the American Cancer Study. And you know, the number one thing is that people don't get involved. You know why? It's because nobody asked them. People say, well, nobody asked me. Hey, do you want to get involved with your flight? Yeah, what is that about? And then you say, okay, here it is. Okay, I'll be there. The way I look at it is, if you don't ask, it's a no. If you ask, there's a 50-50 chance of getting a yes. Thank you. <laughs> Financial support is always good. Yeah. Always good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You guys have, I know you've really helped me a lot, and you've educated me about how this works. This is our first year, so um, we look forward to, to seeing how it goes. We look forward to having Google's because you guys are incredible. I mean, the technology you have, I mean, the little giveaway bags that you gave. Imagine if you had that at your campsite and you said, hey, for a buck, a mystery bag. I mean, look at that. I mean, people are going to be paying a buck, and then they get something in there, and then in the mystery bag, there's something. Every tenth bag, there's a mystery bag that's like, oh, I got a coffee mug, or I got a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's so many yeah. things that you have. And it's just... Exactly. The things that are because you're in the company, you're within, and you go, ah, oh, you know, I got to wear a T-shirt, I got to wear this. And, and, but people on the outside go, ooh, imagine if I gave my badge away. People love it, you know? So, I mean, so we take things for granted sometimes, yeah. So. We do have this is just a way of saying thank you. This is a gentleman. Oh, thank you. Get your t shirt. I got a t shirt, see? <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no jacket in there. Yeah, and we don't need a jacket. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming today and taking the time out. It's a pleasure to have you here. And we usually wrap up everything with a call to action, which means we're going to challenge you. We want to see Google out there to be the best so campsite in there. Because you have the technology, you have, look, you have the personality. Everybody here has got a smile on their face. Everybody looks here. They, you got here for a reason. I mean, look at the smile on their face. Who's going to say no to you? Exactly, exactly. And I think if, if, if you stay with nine, just the, just the information that gets out, you get out to the, your, your, your company, is worth more than you can ever imagine. Because if you can have one employee that gets tested early and gets detected early, imagine that employee will be able to work. I came back to work six weeks later. Imagine if my cancer hadn't been, I may not be, have returned back to work. So I mean, the city's really gained a lot by having me tested early and things like that. So I mean, look at the employee base. And again, just look to your right, look to your left. Somebody in your office is gonna have cancer. We hope, we, we hope they don't. But in reality, the probabilities are high. And when you least expect it, it happens. I never expected to be told that. So. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you.